Alright, so identity is something really difficult to like narrow it down, right? Something that you can't really just tell somebody that this is what you are, this is what you're not. You gotta really kind of figure that out for yourself. But what happens when you have a campus that's throwing out all these type of identities onto you and trying to impose their trying to beliefs on you and you really just don't identify with that group? So that brings me to my argument today. The, D, the EWS department, is significant, in specific, the Chicano Latino program, has a significant negative effect on the, on the student body of Cal Poly Pomona. I'll be addressing these issues on three different bases. One, the EWS department, specifically Chicano Latino program, affects CPP negatively. The second will be the department of Chicano Latino, Latino program harms the growth of the Latino Latina student body on campus. And lastly, the EWS department, Chicano Latino program, creates a rift between the Latino Latina students on campus. Going on to my first point on how it affects CPP negatively, first of all, we have, we have like a cultural center called the Cesar E. Chavez Center. Now, the Cesar E. Chavez Center, that on itself is already synonymous with the, Me with the Mexican culture. It's not really significant for the whole Latino community or Latina community. So people start feeling outcasted, people start feeling marginalized, people start feeling like, do I really need to be walking in there if that's not really how I identify? The, la the second part to that is saying the high for higher education, why, f why does it have to be for higher education? Why can't we all just be on an equal playing field? It's kind of difficult with that. Second, the reason that this, the, this links to the EWS department is because the EWS department is the, is the prior source that supports this cultural center. And in supporting this cultural center, it already aligns itself in saying that everything that this, that this cultural center does and predicates and everything that it does, they're going to be standing by it and supporting it. I'd like to read you their mission statement. The mission statement states, the mission of Cal Poly Pomona, of, uh, the, the mission of Cal Poly Pomona, says our each Chavez Center of Higher Education is to increase the outreach with, um, Recommended uh, wait, recruitment, graduation, and cultural pride of Chicanos, Latinos at, Ca at California State po um, Polytechnic University Pomona. In addition, the, the Cesare Chavez Center for Higher Education exists exists to support all students of Cal Poly Pomona in their in their efforts to become multicultural um, competent, multiculturally competent. I love that last those last two words, multiculturally multiculturally competent. You ever walk in there? You'll, all you'll see in there is all Mexican-based traditions, asset culture, all, all the Mexican flags, all the Mexican leaders. Why do I need to be drowned with all this information? Why can't I see anything from Argentina talking to me about the dirty war? Why can't, I talk, why can't we talk about Venezuela as becoming a communist country? Why can't we talk about Cuba and the embargo? Why can't we talk about these things? Moving on to the EWS department of the Chicano Latino program harms the growth of Latino Latina student body on campus. That talks on the issue on solely on Latino Latina people. Talking about as individuals, as us, we are being pushed on these, type of, these types of identities onto us, telling us that if we want some sort of change, we need to assimilate, but assimilate and compromising our identity, our culture. So and that's the only way that we have a voice that does draw a riff, and it starts becoming the us between them. It cap o us. You see, me personally, I'm not Mexican. I am an, I'm Ecuadorian, but as soon as you see me walk into a room because of my dark complexion or because of my face, y'all already start assuming that I come from a Mexican descent. And there is no question about it. You would, have, you, you would not be exposed to any other country, so you have no reason or basis to be like, oh, he's probably from Salvador, or he's probably from South America. Nobody would tell you that. You're not being informed here. And then for the Latinos and Latinas, they're just being put, they're put in a position that we can't even voice our opinions. We can't be doing these things. And if we do work with like the EWS department or if we do work with the Cesare Chavez Center, all we are put in a position is that we have to compromise our morals and be banned with the flag of Mexican pride behind us or this Chicano identity that they want to impose on us and say that you have a voice, but you need to put this flag behind your back first. 
Going on to the last to the last statement of the EWS Department of Chicano Latino program, it creates a rift between Latinos and Latinas in the student body. It's true, as you see me right here, right now. I could have just waited and done this on my own, but I'd rather just expose it just for the fact that I got a camera on me and it'll probably be on YouTube and I'm gonna tell a whole group of people, just watch this and these are my arguments and you're gonna listen to me regardless. <laughs> so, so the value, the value statement on this is that me personally, as an Ecuadorian, there's nothing on this campus that identifies as myself. Anybody from Salvador would be, distaste, would be distasted with any type of education that's going on. Furthermore, if you ever take a Chicano, Latino, a Ch Chicano studies class on this campus, they use militant language to make you understand that their voice is what matters. Their struggle is what's important. They still use nationalism to make sure that they spread a statement. Nationalism is not a good thing. It's good to start a movement, but to keep it going, you need something totally different. That's not the case here. Looking at an article from, looking at an article from, UCLA, from the UCLA News Press, it starts to state that elementary Chicanos have not succeed, that, that do not succeed are about 10% and the ones that go to college are about five. So they're already making it normalized to the student, to the student body or anybody in general that as a little kid, you're already a Chicano if you're a Latino, if you're a Latino or Latina. So if they're already imposing these ideas from you coming from this whole, from this state of academia, coming out of the EWS department, it's already harming us because we're not, we're not learning about any other cultures. So when they try to boast about some sort of like unity, some sort of coalition, some sort of movement together, it's all BS. It's not really about it, making a movement. It's about preserving one idea, erasing everyone else, and if you want a voice, come join us. If you don't, you're on your own. Well, speaking from the population that's alone, I am challenging you. I am telling you these things, and I do know your theories. So if you do want it, we can do it. That was only for the camera, though. <laughs> so I would also like to stay on a, KB, on a KPS um, online news report. It does say that I don't know when I think of a, I don't know what I think of a Chicano. I think of somebody who grew up in the streets of East LA, said an undergraduate at San Diego State. So these are the type of mentalities that we're having about this idea of Chicano, then apparently these programs have not succeeded to separate themselves from this how image of Mexican American, but rather is just being imposed of this whole new idea that, well, we are kind of a movement, we are doing good things, but we talk about everybody, but it's mostly about us. So I'd like to just conclude with this thing, with this speech that I am different. I am from Ecuador. My Spanish is different. Everything about my culture is different. I'm not you. Don't judge me. Don't put me in a box. Because as you've seen right now, I shred that bitch up. Thank you. Mark what you lack in evidence, you make up in passion. <laughs> and I like that. And, and I don't think that you totally lack evidence, but it's very esoteric evidence. You know, you, you've got a lot of firsthand experience that you're trying to relate to. You've got personal examples that you have to tell us about. Uh, you've got a, a description of what the Cesar Chavez Center of Higher Education is like inside. And, I don't doubt that you've described it accurately, but uh, you know we don't have any hard data on this. We've got you know data that's filtered through your perception on this, and um, I don't know if there is outside research on the effectiveness of these kinds of programs. I think that that would be something that could uh, be talked about. I think the complaint that you are making is probably not an atypical one, but I'm sure other people have felt this way about it. And again, it seems to me like there would be an authority or some expert that has written about, you know, differing Latino experiences and you know this this idea that uh, 
you know, you know why, why are we jumping from one melting pot into another melting pot? You know, that's kind of what's going on. You know, we're being assimilated, but we're not being assimilated to this culture over here, which we originally tried to make sure that we didn't lose our culture from, but we're being assimilated by this other culture over here where we you know, are disappearing as a consequence. And I, I like, I mean, I, you explained the theory pretty clearly. The demonstration of it is what's, I think, problematic. All right, uh, it's pretty well organized. Um, like I said, I think you explain most of your points pretty well. The evidence is a little low, and uh, I'm sure that if you want everybody to, we can all share it on Facebook. So, <laughs> you guys have a Facebook page? Okay, when you see his video, share it on Facebook. Make sure everybody gets a chance to see it. All right, thank you.